Welcome to this YSL tutorial. In this session we're going to teach you about using document maps in SQL Server reporting services. What we'll cover in this session is all about how to navigate reports using document maps. We'll start with an explanation of what a document map is and then show you how to add basic document map labels to individual report items. Then we'll move on and show you how you can use document maps with grouped tables, which is where things get a bit more interesting. And then finally, we'll show you what happens when you export reports which have a document map, um, focusing mainly on Excel and PDF documents. So let's get started. In reporting services, a document map provides you or your user with a neat way to navigate a long or complex report. It's essentially just a collection of bookmarks which sits at the left hand side of the screen and which you can click on to jump to a different place within the report. And in this video, we're going to teach you how to create one. In this report, I've got three completely separate tables, one for films, one for actors, one for directors, and also a chart sitting at the bottom of the report. And currently I've got no easy way to navigate to them. If I preview the report, I have to know that I have to scroll all the way to the end of the film table until I find the, the list of actors and then again to find the directors and I've got no idea where those begin and end. So what I'm going to do in design view is add myself a document map to quickly jump to the start of each table and the chart. If we want to be able to jump to each object in the report we need to give each object something called a document map label. So I'm going to do that first for my film table, I'm going to click in any single cell in there and then I'm going to select the entire table itself by clicking that little blank grey square. What I need to do now is view the properties window and mine's hidden away in this little tab at the right hand side of my screen, I'm going to pin it in place just for the time being. If you can't see the properties window on your own screen, you can enter the view menu and choose properties window or just hit the F4 key. Once you have the properties window, scroll down until you find this section called other and in there you should find that there's a property called document map label and all you really need to do is type in the name that you'd like to see appear within the document map itself I'm going to call this film list once I've done that I can simply go through for each of the other tables so if I click somewhere in the actor table and then select the entire table itself and I'm going to type in actor list for this table and carry on through for the director list and even for the chart itself. Any object can have a document map label. Um, I'll just call it chart in fact. Once you've added all of the document map labels, all you need to do then is preview the report. And you should find that automatically the document map appears at the left hand side of the screen and you can click on each of the bookmarks that's appeared to navigate to that section of the report. It's a really simple idea. Document maps become even more interesting when you have groups in your report. So in this table we have a list of films grouped by which studio released them. If I preview the report at this stage you can see that each group, each studio group has its own heading and its own little total at the bottom and within each group a list of the films made by the studio. What we're going to do is add a document map which allows us to drill down into the, the detail of each group. So to do that I need to go back to the design view. Adding a document map for a grouped item is a little bit different. You don't do it via the properties window. Instead you do it via the groups panel. So I'm going to first of all right click on the studio name group and I'm going to choose to view the group properties. In the dialog box that appears I'm interested in the advanced tab because on there is an option to choose the document map label. I'm simply going to select the, the name of the studio for the uh, to group to jump to each studio group and click OK. And as soon as I preview the report, I should have a list of, in my document map, each individual film studio. And I can jump to each one simply by clicking on his name. It's just as simple to create a nested document map here as well. So within each studio group, I could see a bookmark for each individual film. So to do that, I can go back to the design view. And again, within the groups panel, I want to right click this time on the details item. If I view the group properties, head to the advanced tab, and I'm going to set the document map label to be equal to the film's name. If I click OK, preview the report again, and this time I should see that each studio 
now has its own nested list of detail items. If I click on the one that I want, it will take me directly to that item. It's still possible, of course, to add custom labels to your document map using the technique we saw earlier using the properties window. So let's say, for example, I wanted to create a, uh, a label which sits at the bottom of each studio group, which takes me to the total row for that studio. I can head back to the design view, and this time I'll revert back to my previous uh, technique. I'll make sure I can view the properties window. I'll pin that in place. Then I simply need to select the item that I'd like to jump to. So I'm going to select a cell which is in the, the row uh, the row total, uh, sorry, the group total, and then look in the properties window for the other category. In there I can find the document map label, and what I'm going to do is build my own expression. I'm going to concatenate a phrase which will describe the total row for that studio. If I click the drop down arrow and choose the, the expression option. This makes it easy for me to say, for example, uh, total four. So this is a piece of literal text contained in speech marks. Then I can use the ampersand to concatenate this with the name of the studio whose group I'm in. So I can use the fields category here and then double click on the studio name and then click OK. If I simply then unpin my properties window and then preview the report, I should see now that within each group, at the very, very bottom, I've got a total for that particular studio, which will take me to that precise row. One final thing that's worthwhile mentioning about document maps is what happens when you export a report containing one. So while your user is viewing a report, they've got several options for how they can export the results. So Excel is a popular choice, of course, and also PDF. And if your document, if your report contains a document map, then the results are pretty useful. In Excel, for example, you'll get a separate worksheet containing a list of all of the hyperlinks contained within your document map. You can expand the section using outlining and then click on an item to jump to that object. Likewise, in PDFs, you'll create a document map on the left hand side of the screen just as it's displayed almost in reporting services itself and it works in exactly the same way as you'd expect. You can click on an item to navigate to that object. I clearly need to do a little bit of work about my uh, my page width there. I haven't sorted that out properly. Um, but the document map itself is the important thing there of course. If you've enjoyed this training video you can find many more online training resources at www.wiseowl.co.uk